It is perfectly fine not to like Naruto. Said no one ever. Way better than Dragon Ball put me to sleep in one piece of shit. Nah, I'm playing, but I do hold Naruto to a high standard when comparing it to other forms of media. It's the anime I grew to love for over a decade at this point. But that being said, a true testament to how one loves something is by finding things to hate about it. Naruto is not a perfect story by any means, which is why I have at least 10 things I don't like about the series as a whole. The first being the romantic relationships throughout the show. Now, this is a shonen anime, so it's not like I expected scenes from the notebook to be plopped into the story, but that doesn't make the relationship shown in the show to be all that good. The main relationship I despise to a T is Sasuke and Sakura, since their relationship doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, being that Sakura's love is really an obsession, while Sasuke doesn't seem to enjoy any female's company in the show. I feel like most people would agree on that relationship, but I could also argue a relationship like Naruto Hinata could be slotted right into the mid territory. Not to say that it's overall bad, but Hinata being the only one at first to show romantic feelings towards Naruto, while Naruto doesn't fully understand the concept of love in the first place, at least in a healthy way, doesn't bode well in saying that their relationship is a positive to the story. Another thing I don't like about the show relates to Sakura. I freaking hate her. Now, if I had to just pick one thing that rubbed me the wrong way with her character, it'd be how she treats Naruto, specifically during the Five Kage summon arc. Her pretending to love Naruto all that so she can relieve the burden of having Naruto deal with Sasuke was one of the worst scenes in the entire show, as well as cementing my hatred for this character. The same can be said for my next reason, being Hiruzen, the third Okage. I used to be just neutral to this character, not having a full opinion on him growing up, but as I got older, I come to realize how terrible he was at being Okage. Letting Orochimaru go after his crazy experiments, letting Don pretty much do whatever he wanted, letting Naruto lead a childhood of solitude, he is definitely the worst Hokage the village has come to know, even if the story paints it in a different way. You know who is the best Hokage though? The curly haired Hokage. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to see more content like this on a weekly basis, ergo proving that Hiruzen was less useful than I, as well as being the worst black Hokage. He's black, right? This next reason may come off as a shock, but I could argue that the world building of Naruto isn't all that great. Like, sure, we know of the five main villages in the ninja world, but it's not like we fully delved into understanding most of their customs and history. Like, we know of the terrible reign of the fourth Mizukage, as well as why the village was dubbed the Village of the Bloody Mist, but we never fully got to see that. And even when we got time with the village other than the Hidden Leaf, like the Sand Village, for example, it's only because the Leaf Village had business to handle with rescuing the Kazakage and didn't have time to immerse themselves in the Sand Village enough. This perfectly segues to my next point about what I don't like about Naruto and that a lot of the side characters get put to the sideline in the story. Even for a lot of the Hidden Leaf Ninja, like Rock Lee and Neji, they were severely underutilized by the time Shippuden came around. It's unfortunate that was the case since a lot of those characters brought a different perspective in the story that could help the main characters see things in a better light, whether it be something relating to their mindset or just helping each other get stronger. That being said, my next reason for not liking Naruto to a certain degree would be his power creep. It just seems to me that characters would train just as hard, if not harder than the main character, but because because the show is called Naruto, even if it's just for convenience sake, he always gets the upper hand, even when he doesn't deserve it. Like his fight against Neji for example. And this is not to say that Naruto doesn't train hard at all, but at least in the earlier parts of the story, it seems easier in comparison to some of his classmates like Rock Lee. Now as much as I like a lot of the Naruto games, it pains me to say that the lack of variety within the games is a good enough reason to not like the Naruto franchise, at least to a certain extent. The Storm games are one of the most successful anime games ever, and it contributed to the staleness of not only Naruto games, but other anime games in general. Games like the new Demon Slayer, and Jump Force are prime examples of games that suffer from living long enough to become the villain, as these games add nothing new to the genre of anime games period, as most of them have just been arena fighters that are mid at best. Even with the latest Naruto game Storm Connections, the creators literally expect people to pay full price for a game that isn't even worth half the value of the previous Storm game. It's also painful because of the potential that the Naruto games have. Imagine an open world RPG where you can create your own ninja and traverse through each of the five great nations, or at the very least, changing up the fighting formula to something more of the like of Dragon Ball Fighters. As of right now, Naruto games and most newer anime games are disappointing to say the least. Speaking of disappointments, the ending of Naruto is universally agreed upon to be an overall letdown, which is why it's on this list. Prepping the story since the end of part 1 to have Madara become the overall main villain, all for it to be swiped out by some alien ninja, is ridiculous writing and shouldn't have happened at all, even if we got bored till afterwards because of it. It doesn't help that your viewing of the show has been skewered because of Zetsu basically controlling everything in the background, like manipulating the Uchiha stone tablet, almost making your interpretation of the show invalid to a certain degree. Boruto coming afterwards was just a byproduct of the original Naruto story's failure. And that's actually going to be my next reason, being the existence of Boruto, or more so the lead up to it. Space is the final frontier when it comes to most shows, since there's limitless possibilities, but for the case of Naruto, it kind of ruins the unique factor of it being ninja boots to the ground. While I do think the Boruto story in the manga is good, it doesn't help the fact that it feels more like a band-aid to be put on this permanent scar the original story laid out. Now, even if you disagree with 
with me in 90% of this video. I'm sure most of you will agree that one thing about Naruto no one likes is the amount of filler that is played throughout the show. Now, if you're just getting into the show, this isn't really an issue for you since you have multiple guides online showing you what episodes to skip. But if you were thugging it out as the show was airing, you were in the deep Mariana trenches. I remember vividly that there was a full year with nothing but straight filler aside from like seven or eight episodes in that entire year. I randomly got back into the show and saw that guy was fighting ten-tailed Madara and being confused out of my mind. This wouldn't have been the case if there weren't for filler. Now I get why the filler was being made, also that the show can catch up with the manga, but the ends don't justify the means if it's going to ruin the viewer's enjoyment of the show. And if you do enjoy the filler episodes, more power to you, but for people like myself just wanting to see the next part of the story, it was just an overall drag. All in all, I still love Naruto as a whole, even with all its blemishes. These reasons as to why someone may not like the franchise don't deter me enough to not be invested in the next evolution of it. That being said, I'm sure some of these reasons don't bother you guys, so I asked the question, what are some things in Naruto that you don't like in particular? Even if you love the show, it's okay to point out some of its flaws, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you do want to see more flaws within the Naruto franchise, click the card that you see on the screen that will lead you to my video about how Sakura and Sasuke's relationship shouldn't stand the test of time. Until next time, I'm the Curly Hokage, and I hope you all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.